Yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah. All right, it's six o'clock. Time to call the order of the Mount Pleasant Municipal Planning Commission meeting tonight. At this time, I'd ask you to stay in and uh, Ken and I are going to do the indication and John Hunter going to do our pledge. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come here tonight. Father, we pray the decisions being made here be to this interest of the citizens of Mount Pleasant and for the city of Mount Pleasant. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Let our minutes reflect that we, all our commissioners, for in attendance tonight. Item number three on our agenda is approval of agenda tonight. Make a motion we approve the agenda. I second it. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number four, approval of meeting minutes from prior meeting, October the 12th, 2021. I make a motion we approve those minutes. I have a motion. I'll second. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Number five, plat approval? There are no two. Number six, rezoning request? There are no. Number seven, annexation request? There are no. Number eight, site plan request. At this time, I'll turn it to you, Robert. Yes, Commissioner being present tonight. The site plan request before you tonight is PC-110921. SP and the owner of Mr. Johnny Potts has submitted a site plan request for property location in Hillfine South Park Drive. The purpose of this request is to support development and construction of a 3,500 square foot structure, square foot addition to existing structure on the property, as well as construction of a 4,032 square foot structure to accommodate business in the Cali container. Uh, I've included in the board's packet. Uh, also, to the participants, applied to the applicant, as well as the engineer, um, um, comments, staff comments that I hope y'all have a chance to review. Mm -hmm. um, we've got the site plan. Uh, it's actually up um, tonight for y'all to see. We can discuss some of these items um, if y'all want to, based off of the um, comments that we had. And got Will present tonight, most of the Mr. Johnny Clark, I think, is present, as well as the engineers, Mr. Roach, uh, in the audience, and they'll be happy to entertain any questions. You know, now, specifically for them, but I'll start by going to the staff comments if y'all have questions. Um, proposed parcel, um, one of the staff comments, proposed parcel is not the scale in case. 19.08 acres, whereas all of the sheets identified the property is 1909. It's a clerical error. Uh, it thinks it's corrected uh, on the site plan. Um, it is indeed 19.09 acres total parcel. Um, also, um, all pages of the site plan initially came in. I had the correct zoning as of our current zoning. Uh, indicated on the site plan that has since been changed. The old zoning is still included, um, but new zoning has been added to reflect the current zoning. Uh, one of our questions to the engineer are the easements indicated recorded to the various utility providers agree with these buffers. If you look at the Look at the uh, here. Okay, if you look at the bottom of the sheet right here, the note that is reflected by the engineer's comments as we fly back to our, our initial comment, easements are surveyed and accurately shown and will be recorded after approval by the Commission. All right, so the easements were a concern to us um, because no reflected flat 
uh, no notation of a recording for those particular agents was shown on the site plan. And the reason it came to attention forever to us is in relation to the proposed building B and the proposed addition uh, A being too close in proximity to the delineation of where the utility lines were shown. So we asked that the answer that question that was just presented. I've been looking at this over and over again, and I think the players had an opportunity to look at it. What's indicated on the site plan, he would have drawn the version of the connection, I believe. All right, so um, this is my interpretation of the site plan. So you can speak to this as well. Um, so you, you've got two gas lines that run here, uh, showing this, this one easy gas engine, 10 foot gas engine. You've got two inches and four inch there. Proposed building B in relation to that easement was a particular concern. It's required to be a minimum of 10 foot outside of the easement. The engineer has shown, I take this to be an outside boundary line for where the easement actually starts. Where the easement actually starts. So he's got 10 foot indicated here. Um, I'm just, once again, I'm just guessing that this is an outside boundary to an easement. Uh, I've got 10 foot shown here and then an additional 3 foot 7 inches on to almost the corner of the proposed building B, which would, in essence, if I'm looking at that correctly, put it about 15 feet outside of the outside boundary line. I don't know that to be 100% accurate because it's an outside boundary line, that's where it appears to be uh, in regard. If you take a look at the proposed building A, uh, he's showing 10 foot from the water line um, that is present. Uh, from about the corner of the building uh, all the way to the, I don't know if that's the center line or the starting of the, or the outside edge of the water line. I'm not too concerned about the proposed building A. It's more, of course, the proposed building B uh, in relation to those gas things were. Now, uh, the note that was indicated on there, I just read it out for y'all. That this uh, these easements have been surveyed. I haven't seen a copy of that particular survey, so I'm guessing that you know the engineer has that forthcoming the plantation, or and he might be able to answer that. Quick uh, question as well. So right now, the way it stands, it appears that it's outside the outside boundary line of the easement. Um, now, whether or not that easement is recorded, I don't have particular knowledge. Uh, we did have public works. Uh, one of the uh, employees of public works actually went out and dug up the gas line in relation to where this building was going to be set. And he, I think he had a conversation with the owner who was out there on site. Um, and I think public works is here, representative public works is here to speak tonight to do that if y'all have any questions for him. But I believe after conversation with Mr. McCaffrey, the public works director, that they are satisfied that the building is outside of the two and four inch gas line uh, enough to uh, be satisfactorily placed outside. Of We're talking about the building B. Building B, that's correct. Yes, that's the only part of course mm -hmm. that I have knowledge of. Mm -hmm. so, um, and um, I don't want to speak to Mr. McCaffrey, but that's the conversation that we did have that it was satisfactory to them in relation to building knowledge mm -hmm. by our public works department on where the gas line was in relation to the proposed building B being set and then the plans that have shown uh, where, the, where I believe the that's going to be. If it's all right, can we let the uh, chief speak, public works department, and then. Uh... Yes, sir. That's perfect. Yeah. I'd much rather him speak to that as well. How are you doing? Mom. Yeah. Well, Hello, Mr. Key. How are you doing? Are you satisfied that? Yes. Good. Uh, my locator. 
which is also my gas point, went out and dug up both the gas line and the water line to verify the location of the friction. Right. So you're satisfied with it? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what we need to hear. Good. Thank, Thank you, Keith. I'd like to go on to say that I spoke, I uh, had a conversation with the engineer for Mount Pleasant Power as well uh, in relation to these easements. They find the plan satisfactory outside of it right. uh, as well. So uh, he could be here tonight. Uh, I'll be taking my word for it. Oh, yeah. We conversation will. with Mr. McCrary, uh, engineer for power system. Um, we'll move on to the next comment. If you, if you, unless the point of information we're getting to, we don't know about that. Mm, you're good. The next comment existing structure is a legal non conforming building. That's an existing structure. Um, it's a legal non conforming building approved in the previous zone. As such, it may be expanded by the non conforming statute. But the utilities must not be approached. I think we've discussed that in detail. Proposed building B, I want to even go over that next section because we've discussed that. Um, they indicate on that that particular uh, comment that no encroachments resolved by the more privileged one that And that's what I just pointed out to you. Um, the, the very next comment <clears throat> proposed building B is located within the 50 foot required setback as proposed. We asked if there were going to be a variance request before the zoning appeal. It hasn't been indicated on this middle. So, in essence, we're proposed building B sets within the 50 foot setback. The 50 foot setback is established when we updated our zoning ordinance in 2018, and it applies not only to light industrial, it applies to heavy industrial. So, whether you're in a heavy industrial zone or a light industrial zone, same setbacks apply. That's 50 foot all the way around that property. Um, in our old zoning text, in light industrial, you had um, in foot or in M1, what we call M1, uh, which I think this property was situated in, um, you had 10 foot setbacks. Mm -hmm. um, I think they might have been applicable in M2 and M3. <laughs> so when we updated our zoning ordinance, uh, we went through the fact that industrial. Regardless, and nothing against industrial, but in industrial settings, that can add to um, possible nuisance uses that could affect other properties. The 50 foot setback was set in place both for heavy industrial and light industrial. But we offset that by allowing a large array of permitted uses in both zones. So instead of trying to dictate each piece of property with different setbacks in relation to their use, we allow more uses both in the in light industrial and the heavy industrial, but we also included the 50 foot setback to offset any possible nuisances that could be caused by property in relation to adjacent property. Uh, this building, proposed building B, is actually situated inside that city can set back. Um, to my knowledge, there has not been a variance request. Uh, it has not crossed my desk. I don't know if that will be forthcoming after this meeting. Uh, I haven't spoken with the owner or the engineer in relation to that. But their reply back to um, us was that they have a, rep a legal representative here tonight that's coming to us that you. We're including in your pack a uh, copy of the letter that was sent by the legal representative that wishes to speak in that to the court. Um, and he laid out uh, his interpretation of non conforming best right. And we also have a legal representative for the city that's here tonight that will uh, be glad to give her interpretation of those specific statutes. Um, if you want me to stop right there and let that continue let's, or go to the other comment. Let's, let's, let's hear the legal let's from this point right here. This is Mr. George Dean. Uh, uh, he's a representative uh, from Mr. John Fox's personal office. Uh, he is 
I'll let him, I'll let him give, give, give a little background on himself. I think most of the members have known him. Good evening, Mr. Dean. How's everybody doing? Good evening. That's good. Uh, first of all, I said, I'm George Dean. I do a lot of this kind of land use and zoning work. I kind of, uh, work out in Nashville. Mr. Potts called me about this. And, and uh, uh, really, I guess what I do is just talk a little bit about the, what I call the non conforming property statute here in Tennessee. It's found at uh, Tennessee Code Annotated 13-7-208. And I know there's numbers because I use it so often. That, the, you wouldn't think that the Non-Conforming Property Act, some obscure statute, would come into play in so many cases. Uh, but it, a lot of the zone cases that come up, this thing had an impact uh, for one reason or another. Uh, it was adopted back in 1972. Um, they expanded 208 to include these provisions. And it's kind of a crazy statute, if I don't mind my saying that. Uh, in, in a lot of ways, the, it's a, a little less commonsensical than what you would hope to have. The idea behind it was that uh, a non-conforming use, and every state in the country allows this, that the non-conforming use can stay. Um, but when they start, started doing zoning in the 1920s and 30s, there was a real concern that uh, if there is a non-conforming use and you've changed the zoning, that the uh, localities would order that use to leave, to get out of there. Well, of course, that never happened. And most of the states across the country, including Tennessee, adopted statutes to protect uh, existing uh, uses on those properties. Uh, what most of the states didn't do is what Tennessee did in 72. Not only did Tennessee allow the uses to stay, but they also said, that's in subsection B. Subsection C says, by the way, any commercial or industrial or business use can expand on the property. Uh, now, these properties, there's three of them. They've been used by Cali containers since before the uh, uh, current zoning, I think before the zoning that you had before that. So it's legally non-conforming under the terms of the statute. And the statute says under item C, not B says you can stay, C says you can expand your facilities so long as there's not any kind of nuisance created by the expansion. Um, in this case, what uh, Cali Containers is asking you to do is to expand the one building uh, by adding one to it and then add an additional building. And I think the city looks at it and says, well, um, you can't just build a new building and not comply with a setback. But that is exactly what the statute says, that you can construct additional facilities on the property, the non-conforming property, which these properties are. Um, the 10 to 50 foot setback doesn't apply to the non-conforming property. There's not anything particular in the statute that talks about C with that regard, but with D, this, the other section, and again, Tennessee, <laughs> very unusual, Tennessee also allows a, a non-conforming uh, owner to tear down all the facilities and start all over again. Most states in the country don't allow either C or D because what they want to do is get rid of the non-conforming uses. And most, most places in Tennessee want to do the same thing, but the statute basically says, uh-uh, that can't do that. Uh, the idea originally was that ultimately the facilities would get old and the manufacturing use and the commercial use would have to go someplace else because that's where they could build new. But the Tennessee statute, in fact, says no. Not only can you expand under C, not only can you stay under B, but under D, you can expand, you can tear down everything and start all over again. Now, the one caveat to D is that if you tear it all down, you've got a blank piece of uh, land, and under D, then you do have to comply. Uh, under subsection I, it says, notwithstanding the provisions of D, you've got to comply with the setback regulations. But as to see, that, so that provision is not there. The, if you're just expanding, adding new buildings, there's no requirement under the statute to comply with the uh, setback requirement. Um, uh, in one way, the statute makes good sense, and that is that I think the Tennessee General Assembly, both in 72, and they've amended this several times over the years. The latest was around 2005 and was a, um, uh, a gigantic. Uh, addition to the, the statute. But in one way, it's made sense all these years, and that is the Tennessee General Assembly just wants to protect owners of non-conforming properties. Uh, the Tennessee General Assembly's been determined to allow them to expand their uses 
uh, not have to comply with the uh, zoning regulations that ordinarily would because they've been changed. They're not conforming. They were there before the zoning regulations, and that's why the General Assembly has seen fit to do this. Um, there's, there's some talk in the staff comments, Mr. Archibald, about um, increasing the degree of noncompliance. And the problem with that is that that's a, that's a local requirement. And it doesn't, it, it has to fail in the face of the statute. Uh, Tennessee, uh, the, the city of Mount Pleasant, the city of Nashville, doesn't have the right to adopt zoning unless the city, uh, the state gives it to us. Uh, the 13-7-101 uh, at SEC and 13-7-201 at SEC do that. They give it, give the power to the counties and to the cities. But with strings attached, and one of those strings is the Non-Conforming Property Act, uh, Section 208. Uh, so in the uh, increase of non-compliance, most cities have that, Nashville has it, uh, many of the jurisdictions that I work in have a provision that's similar to that, but it just doesn't apply in the context that we're talking about because of the state statute. Uh, uh, a, a few years, many years ago, really, uh, 1975 or 76, uh, uh, Clarksville adopted a statute, uh, an ordinance that would uh, uh, give non-conforming users 10 or 15 years to uh, wrap up their operations and go away. It, they're, they're, a lot of states allow this to be done. Uh, the owner of the property sued Clarksville and said, hey, you know, the statute doesn't allow you to do that. Uh, uh, I'm allowed to stay as long as I'm continuing the same business on this property. And ultimately, the Tennessee Court, Tennessee Court of Appeals looked at it and said, hey, you know, that's exactly right. So uh, he has the right to stay. He has the right to expand. And as a non-conforming use, <coughs> both regulations, setback regulations, just don't apply to the construction of new facilities on the property. Anyway, I'm glad to respond to any questions, but that, that's essentially the history of uh, Section 208. As I say, I use it. Many, many times it uh, comes in more cases. In fact, I think the case that uh, is it the, the, the aluminum folks that uh, I was here for, yeah. I think in part some of that was, was there's a legal not conforming issue in that uh, uh, provision as well. Anyway, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to respond. Uh, uh, but I just wanted to kind of give you the background of the statute and kind of our perspective on why we don't think we should have to comply with the 50 uh, foot setback. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, I agree with Mr. Dean's interpretation of the statute. I also agree that he's the expert in that field. Um, I think we have a factual disagreement <clears throat> because my understanding is that there are multiple parcels and that building B is on a different parcel that is, has not been historically used. And as because it's a different parcel, you can't expand onto a different parcel. That's also part of that state statute that he was citing. It's a different section, I think section E. Um, and so what we've asked from Cali Container, from Robert's office multiple times, is proof that that property has been used. Um, and that's where it's not a, we're not having an interpretation problem. We're having a factual issue. And so... I agree if that property, if there's proof that that has been used, there's something built there, it's used as under the old zoning, then it can be expanded. But my understanding is it's an empty property and then we're building a building for the first time now. And so it's not non-conforming, it's a new use. Um, and that's where we've kind of got in this ongoing disagreement, but my understanding is that it's a factual disagreement, and if we could clear that up, we could have a different discussion, but we haven't been given the information to do that yet. Mike, Mr. Potts is here. To, uh, I just, uh, he could just kind of talk on how, how it's been used. Uh, let me say, it's not been used for building, but you don't have to have a building to have a non-conforming use. If you did, agricultural Enterprises would never be non conforming. Quarries would never be non conforming. Uh, uh, landfills would never be non conforming. You don't have to have a building, it just has to be used. This parcel, as I understand it, has been used part and parcel of, of the uh, manufacturing process on the property. And Mr. Potts is here, he's the owner of the company. 
he'd be glad to, to fill you in about it. We, we, we will. We'll get, we'll get to him in just a minute here. I want to get a little bit more discussion from Robert here, and uh, we appreciate it. But he, Mr. Potts will be giving out the time. Thank you. Um, you want me to continue? Yeah, you, that's you fine. Comments yeah. Mm -hmm. at this point? Okay. Um, so, uh, moving on down the line, I believe here, um, the next comment. Okay, so there was a sheet that was included in the original uh, submission that wasn't applicable to the Mount Project. Uh, that was notated in the comment that she had since been removed. No one reads the documents these days. So that's been, that's been addressed as well. Um, we also um, called out Section 11.2 Off Street Parking of our Zone Ordinance A1, Existing Facilities D. Additions of more than 25% of the square footage of existing structures must comply with site development standards. We ask that the engineer and applicant identify parking facilities, number of parking spaces, surfacing, and dimension parking spaces, and the landscaping. Compliance with ADA requirements must be addressed. Um, reply back uh, and show them the plan to, if you go to the last page, I think it is. Um, Reply back from the engineer with existing parking has been added to address these comments. Now, found ADA space added. Uh, and parking summary and any special parking statement has been added to the plan to address the time. So, we're moving down here to it's going to be to the L1. Close to the last page. Last page. L1 is the last page. There we go. L1. Okay. So he's got it pulled up here as well. So parking has been identified here. Uh, one, two, three, four. And then you've got additional spaces. Uh, we'll bring that up just a little bit. Between 16 and 17. Yeah. So um, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, showing 19 spaces. Uh, there is a I see. Yeah. Was that the pull that in? Not sure. Interesting. Yeah, that's cut off. That's not on me. Oh, okay. I got you. Not on here. I got you. We only see. I only see the. We're missing five through fourteen. Yeah. Was it four right there? The page is cut off, Miss Jennifer. Okay. Hey, I think I talked. I had a hard time finding it last night, too. So they are showing parking there um, with an ADA spot. Uh, there's, if you look at old plats associated with that property, that I'm not for sure if that's a right of way where they're showing one through four or if that's an easement to the property. Because uh, I look back at old plats and I don't know if that actually belongs to the applicant. Um, and maybe the applicant can speak to that. Because right now, the way the parking is shown on an old plat from 97 that I had access to, that's actually identified as a right of way. Right here? Mm -hmm. This whole area right there. Yeah. Because it's outside the property boundaries. Um, so that's a concern as well. Uh, identifying required parking on an adjacent property. Uh, I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not clear on that. And the only plat that I have that shows me anything indicates that that is a right way uh, that's not associated with that property. Uh, but once again, when that gets up, maybe you can speak to that a little bit all, all the knowledge I have right now is what was shown on the old plat that I, I came across. Uh, so, um, there has been land that has been added. You can zoom that out. Uh, landscape has been added to Rose Building B on uh, both sides facing uh, public right of way. So, we're using that as foundation landscaping. Um, and then I think there was some added additionally to the front of the existing building or no, just along the right of way in relation to the proposed building. Day. So, 
Uh, there is a gate there on site in the gate there in that vicinity. So uh, the only um, landscaping requirement uh, really out there was to uh, do the foundation landscape in relation to public right of way. Um, the uh, indicates everyone uh, that comment in relation to landscaping specifically foundation plans are required for building B and building A addition. <clears throat> and the comment back from the engineer was uh, in relation to L1, which is the page you're looking at. Uh, stating that they address this. <coughs> the next comment is our automatic irrigation um, systems are required in all landscapes for commercial and industrial districts. Planning Commission, straight out of zoning text, may waive automatic irrigation requirements for existing areas with existing vegetation. However, plant material plan within, within such areas to meet transition work requirements, but it must be within 100 feet of a hose build or to be provided or provided a temporary above ground irrigation system. Um, and a note's been added, I believe, to the bottom of L1 in relation to irrigation. So if you look right here, right there, landscape right irrigation will not be automatic system in the state will be provided by designated maintenance work and selected by all the live bottle, provided the hose bills located in the front of the area and then irrigated those built locations above. Um, so, in essence, there's still some questions that I have uh, in relation to the site plan. Um, number one, I don't know if this is one parcel or three parcels. Uh, I haven't seen a plan to identify either. Uh, I've viewed an aerial, which is accessible by the public for the county tax system. At one point, in the initial submission of this, it showed three different parcels. I think Mr. Dean, that was attorney, even alluded to the fact that it's three different parcels uh, when he was speaking. Um, now, if you pull up the aerial, it shows one parcel. There hasn't been a flat to substantiate a change from three parcels to one parcel. This could be brought before my office. That's required by state law as well. That any change in the property uh, being platted and approved before the property can be used as one parcel versus three parcels. So the uh upon the initial onset of um our discussion with the applicant, uh, not this meeting but prior meeting, uh they did have a surveyor, can't recall the gentleman's name, but um Steve, that's correct, yes, thank you. Um he provided a plat uh, we provided comments to that plat. Never received any contact back from Mr. Sieber in relation to that. Um, but it's never been recorded. It's never been brought before this board. It's never been approved. And to my knowledge, it hasn't been recorded. Um, that's one question. Is it three parcels or is it one? Um, is this a right of way where the parking is indicated or is it associated with the national property? Um, I think they've made the most part the landscape requirements for what it is, uh, you know, where it's situated. I think it meets the foundation requirements for landscaping. Um, I do believe that uh, the way the buildings are positioned and shown here is satisfactory to utility easements. Uh, but once again, there's still some lingering questions that Miles has in relation to the site plan. Uh, just not having the information available. I apologize to the board, but. Those were supplying comments, and this is where they were addressed. So the applicant is here, <clears throat> as well as the engineer, uh, Mr. Uh, Hager from Local Associates is present. And if y'all would like to discuss it further with me or any of those parties that I just mentioned, I'd love to answer any questions, and I'm, I'm sure they would as well. I know the applicant would visit our point this week. So that is the length of the questions that I have on staff uh, in relation to this staff. Okay. At this time, uh, we'll let Mr. Spot, uh, Potts, excuse me, if he'd like. Johnny Container is still three parcels. Three parcels was used for Johnny Container use since 1999. He actually rented the 
the third big parcel before he bought it in 2005. So he bought it and it became Cali Container property in 2005. Now, he used it for Cali Container use from 2005 till now. <coughs> now, we bought Cali Container stock. So we own the Cali Container name, which Cali Container owns the property. Me and Donna own Cali Container. Okay. So the property has not changed. It's all the same ownership, been the same ownership since 1999. Right. Uh, so what side <coughs> me and Donna own it now? We're... You are the property owners, correct? We own Kelly Container, and Kelly Container owns the property. Yeah, you're not even the property owner. You're you're leasing the property some long-term lease, or uh, no, no. Mm -hmm. I own the corporation, Kelly Container. Okay. Kelly Container okay. owns the property. Gotcha. Okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. The use of the property is what's important more so than the ownership. We have. We have aerial photos from 2006 that shows drones are stacked on that property, and we have used that property. So it's used as storage. Yes. Yeah. Consistently. Yes. Trailers. We park trailers there every day. Mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I'll you do that. <laughs> so this is an aerial photo of 2006. This is the big piece of property over here, and these are the trailers where we're going to put the building. Hmm. So the trailers will go away when you build the building? Yes. Okay. Let's see it, Ms. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as the parking, that's been the same parking since 1999. Actually, I run Kelly Container in 2004. Mm -hmm. I was there in 2004. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why I decided to buy Kelly Container. Mm -hmm. Is there any issues with some of the questions that Robert had for, you know, on, his, on the uh, comments of getting them corrected? I mean, do you, you want to speak? Yes, sir. Uh, as I alluded earlier to the board, um, Give me a seat. They, they, for the most part, um, <laughs> address the site plan standards. Uh, the only question uh, that I had, the only questions I had remaining was, is it three parcels or one single parcel? Um, and is that a right of way that's uh, Accessed by the property, or is that a right of way that actually don't even belong to the property? It's a, a right of way that accesses the property. It's it was gained from the original property. That's where the parking has always been. And it's a possibility. It's indicated as a fifty foot right of way. That's the only thing you see on the brick on the flat that I was able to access. Ninety seven, I think. Um, yeah. And I exactly accessed that for a record. Really, if you want to get down to it, it was actually used in 1983 when the building was built. Mm -hmm. As far well, it used to be a plating company, but that's yeah. that doesn't does yeah. it doesn't pertain to us because mm -hmm. we didn't start Cali's <coughs> container till 1999. I guess the bigger question would be: Does it matter if it's one property or three if they've been using it? it so the. No, it doesn't, if they've been using all three properties. So a non-conforming use can only be on, you can only expand a use that's been a use. And I'm not, I don't have a legal opinion for you on whether or not this is a use that can be expanded on that property um, to the extent that it would allow you to use the old setbacks and not the new ones. I, I don't, I just don't have that answer for you today. I've, tried to get that information before so we could be more prepared. Um, I'm sure Mr. Dean has an opinion for you, but I don't have one as far as whether that property would be non-conforming based on this use. But they're not asking for non-conforming use. They are because set back, set the setbacks set back 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 for are for the old zoning and not the new zoning because they're expanding a use. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, uh, as far as the statute, if we buy additional property, we cannot get to non-conforming use. As long as we own our three parcels and they was before your zoning, 
would get to keep it. I'm going to show what it's through with the tax records. Can you come? Can you come yes, show me? Yes, ma'am. They added it together when I asked to get one bill for the property. Okay. It's so it's, yeah, it's, okay. it's, okay. it's, so it's that one and that together. one, right? Those two right there. But it basically yes, lot one and two on your bill, right? Yeah. 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 You, can't, yeah. You, can't, you can't stretch it too okay. much. It'll go crazy. It's See the little yellow line? Yeah. There's two right there and then a the big one right okay. there. Okay. So, so that used to be two and they just gave you one. Okay. Now it makes sense. I just want to make sure. If you pull it up now, it's just one. Mm -hmm. It just shows it all one because I asked for one bill. Well, and the, and and this tax I'm record curious, system, uh, it shows me, two. Me as part uh, as planning done. I'm curious as to how that happens because you're you're taking a parcel that actually has physical boundary lines. That picture is not a legal document. That's not a legal document. Okay. Yeah, no, this is mm -hmm. all that is is for tax purposes. Mm -hmm. So the legal document is going to reflect three properties. Right. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. We'll get to you in just a second. <laughs> you got anything else, Robert? Uh, Thank you, Johnny. I appreciate it. Thank well, you. I did, where are Wait, the other parking places? Yeah, where's the parking club? I, I figured, I figured that. And what, and what we're calling it, maybe an e, uh, uh, right away, before the rest of them are. Yes, we're right here. There's some, par there's some parallel parking. See that line right there? Uh -huh. Yeah, you can see one marked up at the end. All the way down, pull it down a little bit. There's a four marked up here in probably 14. Yeah. There's 14, 15, 16, 17 right there. Oh, okay. So all the parking is going to be on one side. Yeah. Well, it's going to be here, here, <coughs> along the side, and then, and then right here on the end, and then one handicap here. That's what I meant. But it won't be any on the other side where the other building is. Yes, ma'am. They're over here in front of the building. So yeah. <laughs> Thank the building you. Here. Okay. Yeah. I got that's, you that's now. That's what they're looking at. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, John. Yes. I don't have anything else to I add. Guess I guess Mr. Rhodes likes to speak right there. Yeah, sitting on the edge of his yeah, seat. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to clarify the parcel issue is, is a big discussion, but we submitted it the first time with all three parcels shown. We have that data. We turned that off. At, we're addressing a prior comment. This has been submitted two or three times now. We initially were showing all three parcels. We were asked to take that off, but we can. I can get you those. We have that information. I'll just send you all three parcels so everybody can see it real clear, uh, and that won't be an issue then. But addressing the parcel issue, we're also showing the fence that exists, which encircles all three parcels because that's where they've been operating within the fence. Thank you. Thank you. And what about the overflow? The drainage? What about the drainage? Drainage. Uh, the way the uh, the way the parcel lies, drainage uh, is not a not a concern. Uh, we did not a lot of not a, excuse me, not a lot of additional disturbance. Okay. Uh, it was looked at through emotional associates uh, at a minor level uh, because of the uh, lack of a lot of disturbance that's going to be added. There. As far as the drainage goes, and the way the parcel lies. Yeah, we already been flooded. Okay. And, All right. Um, Are you more comfortable? So my concern is that no. Corey has, is not prepared to give you a legal opinion based on that, the stuff she didn't know. Yeah, I mean that. I don't know. <laughs> but this is all on the one parcel. This is all parcel where the. Building B is. Yes, ma'am. That's all three parcels. It's all three parcels. The trailers, all the trailers and the boom drums are stacked up on them. Right there, that's all on that floor. They used to have the trailers out there everywhere. I know. Yeah, they did. They had them everywhere. They got them everywhere out there. But a trailer is not a building. It's not really using it. It's not a foundation. But it was being used. But it was being used. But it was being used. The examples that Mr. Dean gave, being a landfill and a rock quarry, like to me that. It's definitely changed the property. I don't know that this has changed the property, but again, I haven't looked at this issue at all because I didn't know that this existed. Um, I can look at it and get back to you. That and the only thing, the only way that's even relevant to this discussion is based off of the setbacks for Building B. Is which could be fixed through zoning and appeals if right. we want to go that route. Are they it. accurate or not? You know, or could be fixed. Mm -hmm. So that's what we've been. That's what we've been talking about, and it, it's, it's, I guess this is now a legal question. I can go back and see whether storage of, outside storage of trailers is a use 
that would it allow you about the BCA being another option. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not prepared to answer that. Problem, but... I mean, just... We couldn't operate it if we didn't have it. I understand, but it's based off of, I mean, illegal non conforming use means that there's a. But the property use that the company uses. That's part of the property, I would assume. Or else, well, anyway, I don't know the answer. Is it the reason why you couldn't move it back a little further? Uh, no, ma'am, to get into storage and all that stuff, I don't I don't want to move it back any further. <laughs> We probably need to our biggest issue here is just setbacks, correct? Right. Yeah. Really now, I think our only but it, but he could comply with the fifty foot setback. Yeah, if he, if he wanted to. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd say the two options going forward are to, you know, if I can get some confirmation that this would be a use that would allow non it to be non conforming and have these old setbacks applied. Or the other option is to have, again, the BZA uh, say that for these topographical or these issues with the property boundaries or something like that, that there's a reason that the setback should be different. I mean, we've, it's the same two options that we've had, though. We're we'll be talking about for a while. You know, pers personally, you know, I applaud him for going in that area and wanting to build something where it's located and stuff. <clears throat> I mean, it's not, I don't think every business is lined up to go out there and to build in that area out there. You know, personally, that's my opinion, you know, and they've used, and I, I, I'm aware of this, I've been around this Cali container back and forth out there a long time. And at times it's been a mess with all these traders and stuff there. And then, like I say, I commend him if he wants to come in and do buildings and stuff like that, but you know, so if you can consider, if you would like, you know, if this is a use, in your opinion, that would allow for non-conforming expansion, you know, you can make that decision. I just don't, I can't give you, I can't say yes, I, I understand. Say yes well, I, I think the board um, understands that. But you so. can make that decision based off of the other evidence presented to you today. If I, if I might, I'm just, just mentioning that. I don't think there needs to be any kind of change in the land in order to take a farm. Um, you don't have many agricultural non-conforming uses you know, because of the protection of another statute here for agricultural uses in Tennessee. But in, in cities, you can have a problem like that. The farmer doesn't really change the land much, uh, probably at all. But but you, if if you had farming across uh, a boundary, um, uh, my dad's a nursery uh, owns a uh, thousand acres, thousand acres nursery shop. Uh, they cross several boundaries. Um, uh, you know, just because the land hasn't changed, the use as a nursery, growing that nursery stock on the property, is a land use and makes that property, if, if the zoning change would make it legally not. <clears throat> Same thing here. It's being used for the purposes of Cali Container, the manufacturing process, and so it's part and parcel of the land use, regardless of the fact that it's over uh, three parcels of property. And I, I don't think there's any case. I don't think there's any case. All cases in this state, I don't think there's a case that trees, so specifies we'll this right or wrong. It's just look at the statute. You know, the statute essentially tries to protect, in a very grandiose way, the property owner's rights to, to go forward with these non-conforming uses. And so the 10-foot requirement here is the applicable one because of the non-conforming nature of the use of the land. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Thank you for your indulgence. Yeah, we appreciate you. Yes, sir. You got anything else, Robert? Gotcha. Everything else is good with the plan except the setback. Um, and the parking question, those two. Yes, sir. We got that. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. Oh, the right of way. Set back for the get, get, get these couple, get the couple minutes off. Can you move you? Move that top. I got a, a couple more signed up on this issue <laughs> here, and uh, I'm going to let Jennifer, the secretary siphon the name here. I just really can't read. The Is person. somebody else here to speak? Who wrote first? Who signed up first? Who signed the list first to speak tonight? On this particular issue. On, on this, this issue. particular issue. If not on this issue. Anybody? Anybody? Because the last one's George, and he's yeah. he's spoke. I, I wasn't sure that he signed we, up. We're we're yeah. glad you did. I, and, and I mean, I see uh, Brown. <laughs> oh, is that first one to Brown too? <laughs> 
something totally different. Okay, anybody else on this issue that we're discussing right now? These are all different issues. Okay. Okay. All right, Bill. So, so what I, president can, I can't give you any other opinion okay. today. If you can right. rely on what Mr. Dean has presented, that you know you're allowed to make, base your decisions off of the evidence that has been presented to you today. I just I wasn't prepared to answer. It, sure, that I question. Mean, we get that, and I wish. Can, can they try to approve it with the condition that goes in front of the BCA for? But it might not have to. Yeah. Legally, if yeah, I mean, can we wait on her legal opinion, or is that because I mean, I'd be I, I not that I disbelieve anything Mr. Dean has said. I really would like our attorney to what do you, what do you? I think even if they whether they agree or disagree, whatever, it, it doesn't change the fact. I it's, agree. It's probably the best thing to do with that piece of property, whether it's ten feet or fifty feet. I agree, but I don't, I don't necessarily want to set a precedent, but. So the property's been used for that use ever since he's purchased it. Mm -hmm. and well, and purchased even before. Yeah, even before that. A lot of, for I temporary storage. Yeah. I can't for move, movable that. storage. I, mean, I don't have that history. So I do. Yeah, <laughs> Sadly. I know. Yes, I mean, it's it's zoned, since, when was the zoning changed? It might be 18? Our zoning changed in 2018. But you've owned it since? I bought it in 2018, but Kelly Container is actually on the property. Mr. Everett owned it in 1999 when he bought it, but he transferred it, we claimed it to Cali Container in 2005. Yeah, that's what I saw. So Cali Container's owned it since 2005. Now, I bought all of Cali's stock. I am the stockholder in Cali Container, and I own the name Cali Container, mm -hmm. which owns the property. Right. In turn, I own the property, but Cali Container truly owns the property. It's deeded to Cali Container. But the, the, I don't know if it changes anything or not. 2018, this property was purchased in 2018. No, the property wasn't purchased in 2018. It was quick claimed to Cali Container in 2005. I only bought Cali Container stock. I only I own the corporation, and the corporation owns Cali. The only reason I said 2018 is because it came out of your mouth, and that's the reason I was. Yeah. I, I didn't hear that. But too. since like 05, it's been Cali Container. Hmm. It's been, he, it just changed it's been operated who was in charge of it. Right. I mean, I saw that when I was looking at the tax record, yeah. so I'm comfortable that that five or six. Has this okay. use been in use since, 2000, since before 2018? That's the question. Yeah, sure. Sure, 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 yeah. sure yeah. I know that. Yeah. So sure that, yeah. If you're comfortable that that use has been absolutely in place on mm. that area where parcel B, then you can expect to expand the business based on the old rule. Yeah, it's, it's been used. Any other comments from the staff here? Oh, no, sir. From the board? <coughs> Not, I entertain a motion. I make a motion that we approve the site plan with the under the old zoning of a ten foot setback. Second. I have a, approval in the second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Did you abstain from voting? You not voting your way. No. Aye. She said I. <laughs> I. Yeah. I thought she did. She's quiet sometimes. <laughs> Number nine, old bidding. Uh, there is none. Number ten, other business. Uh, yes, sir. I'd like to sometimes things get too to the board. Okay. Uh, you received a copy of seven point two in your packet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every commercial. And at the last month's meeting, we uh, discussed this. At length, because we're the board. Um, okay. Now, once again, the board asked that we look into the uh, text and the requirements of that particular zone in relation to what y'all considered you know, permissions to, to the land use development mm -hmm. and so forth. So we did. Um, and in every commercial zone, which you have before you, you can't vote on it tonight. 
She's been brought up to you as this will be brought to y'all in December. Um, but what you have in front of you is the addition of two permitted pieces at the very bottom of that. One being single family, the other being two family. Uh, we thought that was appropriate to address concerns of the board. Uh, we did do research in regards to the zoning text and are confident that that is the only part that has, has to be changed in our zoning text reflected liberated uses um, to address the fact that we've had several things brought to our attention um, and the fact that the neighborhood commercial actually says that it should be beneficial to residents and then if you look at the our zoning our three in particular it says it needs to be close and adjacent to downtown so there's uh, we've looked at it, and, and this is the only text that really needs to be changed in the phone document to act and uh, change to that ordinance. Okay. And that's what we're, we're cool. proposing to the board. So next then, month. everywhere there's neighborhood commercial, those will apply. That's correct. Yeah. So, anywhere there's neighborhood commercial, uh, NRC, thank you for bringing it up, um, those two uses, along with all the other all uses, uses, should be allowed. In, in that, you know, that particular zone. <clears throat> awesome. Very good. Um, they were still, the vault regulations did not change. Um, they the same. But I think, barring any other things that we might consider um, between now and then, you have something similar to this, if not this coming to the board. Um, so I just want to bring it to the board attention. Know so that they can get some people on the sign sheet that they like to talk to the board outside of that. They can come and see some comments, but I just want to alert the board. Very good. Uh, Robert, um, once it does become neighborhood commercial, <coughs> the historical board does not have any things of over. The remodeling of the home over the colors and stuff. Okay. So I got that from the historical board in Columbia. That's the issues they have. I would think it would affect it, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, not that it would yeah. affect it, but if they decide that they wanted to change it to a more modern look, right. there's nothing you can do about it. Okay, so I, I've looked at that. Uh, since we've last discussed that, and I know there's been a topic. And that was one of the questions that they had about it. So I just want to make sure we know the, that. Uh, certified local government. I think that particular legal opinion on it. I asked the court to look at that for me. They all have a interpretation of that says that it lies within the historic district that's governed by the historic rules. That's our opinion. Mm -hmm. um, now, I'm uh, I'm gonna ask before we look at that, but everybody that I've talked to, including experts in the field, uh, tend to agree and direct. Um, so I'll, we'll get a little bit. Very good. Thank you. Uh, I wrote that down last time, and it is on the top of my list. I just hadn't got to. <laughs> but that's yet. why a lot of a lot of the houses down there have turned into like apartments and stuff because are they in a commercial district? Mm -hmm. I will. It's, it's our opinion. It's yeah. two different things. Yeah. So there's the base zoning, which would be the same with commercial. Right. And mm -hmm. then there's a historic overlay. Oh, right. The historic mm -hmm. overlay yeah. addresses design, exterior aesthetics, from the public view. The zoning addresses the use. use. So right. you might have an older historic large home that's been turned into a park, but it still looks like it. Follow, it falls under the guidelines. Right. It, right. It's two different review boards. Right. So you've got mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, that could take advantage of the CN, provide for a single family residence. Okay. Oh, I'm free. So I, th I think they can work together really well. Very good. 
Thank you. And it's in Coach Park's going to be clear. That's not commercial, which reflects up the Florida residential allowance as well. Now, this is not brought to the board for one request. I want the record to reflect that. It's just simply because it has been um, not only brought to us uh, this past time, but a previous time, as well as in relation to we had another time our before downtown, that one. We had one um, right over district. here. Yeah. Having upstored residential mm -hmm. falls to the uh, land use plan mm -hmm. for that area. Um, so that, that's the reason we're talking about. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been, than, it's been, it's been before us forward. Yeah. And y'all yeah. asked us to look into it. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. We appreciate, we appreciate sure. your work, Robert. Yes, sir. I got a couple people here signed up. Uh, we didn't go through wait a minute, wait a minute. Hello, oh, hold God. on just a sec. <laughs> uh, you had that board and staff comment? Sorry. I just said them. <laughs> yeah. we, just, we just got ahead of ourselves. Yes, sir, I'm sorry. Uh, no, sir, I don't have any support. All right, now we're going to get the citizens' comment. We got a couple of people signed up here and forgive us for not being able to make out the name. And, but, We've been uh, working on that. Yeah, the, the first one. <laughs> I want to get home take my hat. Hey, you're fine. But, uh, I thought I was going to have to go to Mr. Mike's house. Yeah. <laughs> He's already gone. Like I, yeah. Hey, I, I have no comment. This is going in the direction that we want to go in. Uh, thank you guys for taking the time to listen. Um, I don't know if you've driven by and seen the house that we, we purchased have. and the work that we're doing on it. So um, all the siding was rotten on the front of it. We're taking that off and replacing that as we speak. Right. Um, it's the first time that the uh, the uh, in inside of that home has been seen daylight since uh, the walls of that home <laughs> since 1847. <laughs> Amazing to look inside. We took all kinds of pictures, but uh, we're going back with um, poplar siding. Uh, we're also going to insulate it and wrap it with tie back so that it will, you know, keep it uh, like it's supposed to be. Right. Um, and uh, we're going to paint that. back the actually the roof that we put on last week, a week before last, was uh, identical to the roof that was on it back in the 1900s. Very good. That we found. Very good. Uh, we're excited about being here. Yeah. And appreciate we appreciate you, you being here. We appreciate y'all. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? What's well, that next one? Somebody Brown. He's about me. Yep. Uh, okay, so you both. We got him. I had the third one on there. It looked like a Number. doctor's signature. <laughs> you good? Anybody Anybody else would like to speak? You can all come to the summer meeting as well. Yeah. The agenda, and be voted. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be voted on in December on the agenda if you'd like to attend then. If not, I hear a motion for adjournment. What date will that be in December? Uh, back on Tuesday. Back on Tuesday. Back on Tuesday. I'll make a motion. We adjourn. Second. A motion in the second. That won't be the final decision. Right. They go for the board. Jennifer. Jennifer. Yes, they're going to go in front of the. Yeah. All right. Thank y'all. Thank you, everyone.